The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technicians Hour, Monday, October the 4th, and October is starting to be very interesting. Big move on Friday from the low of 33,785 uh, in the Dow. Bam, goes right to the, look at this, right on the daily chart on the left side, the weekly in the middle, monthly on the right. Goes right to the 14 period exponential moving average and, and it gets repelled. <clears throat> In fact, it went a tad over, then it got repelled. So, uh, basically, what we're doing for subscribers to my opening call, we went along a position in the diamonds on a Friday, but only as a trade because we're anticipating at some point this week we're probably going to go back to the short side. <clears throat> and with that said, uh, so far, we're down 40. We were up a little bit. We went to 34,410, just above the nine period, the little pink nine period moving average. And now we're below that. This is a real struggle. And the more work I said to subscribe to my opening call in the overview that I did, I do a webinar on Saturday or Sunday. It was on Saturday uh, this week for subscribers to my opening call. And I said, we're going to go through things. But there are a lot of stocks that are very interesting that I'd like to get. But not yet. There's very little that I actually want to buy. I'd rather just go with an index and have a stop so that we take a profit and boom, get out of it. And in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at is the MAGD is holding quite nicely in the daily. Look, the histogram's improving. But the pink a nine period moving average is way under the 14. This is going to be a real struggle to go positive. That's number one. Number two is the stochastics pulling back is at 38% and the on balance volume showing no strength whatsoever. So all I can say is that I'm anticipating that this arch formation, the pattern that I call in the Chapman Wave methodology, I always look at basically three, three forms of movement. One is a straight line up or down. Two is a cup formation. That could be a V where you're going from one point down and then back, and how you deal with that left side high is really important. And number three is where it makes an arch or an inverted V. And sometimes, like today, you get that single leg A to the upside. You'll see it here in the uh, one-minute chart. Look, single leg A up. After making a peak D, it pulls back at about 8.50 this morning, around about 43.40. You come down, down, down. All of a sudden, pop to the upside. And that's a single leg A up and it fails. And now it's struggling to try to find any support whatsoever. That's the E-mini. So now what we're looking at is um, this arch formation, which often fails at a peak A or a B, the second, first or second peak, and comes down. We're going to be watching this really closely. My anticipation is that we get some form of, where did that go? Some form, there it is, some form of the lowercase h that can become a lowercase m, so that it goes sideways in basically a rectangle formation and then takes out the bottom. It often does that. We're going to be watching that very closely. All right, back to our story. Let's get out of that right there. So, so the parameters are very simple. A close below 34,200, that's just 110 points lower than where we are right now, says, oh, a oh, really good chance that it's going to fail or struggle and make just a really weak uh, push to the upside. If by later on in the day, the Dow is trading up about 60 points or more uh, and holding, and you can get a little bit of a bounce in the Qs or the IWM, the Russell 2000, that'll help. But that's not happening right now. Let's go to the S&P. And you can see the weekly chart. I put a down arrow at this peak G at 35,631. We've had uh, seven weeks, six weeks, this will be the seventh week below the all-time high. The monthly chart has made a peak D. Does that mean at peak D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen? That's when we usually get very cautious. This is the Dow monthly chart. We'll see what happens. Make it real simple. Anytime in the next week or two, a close below 33,300 says, uh-oh, probably going all the way back down to the low that was made back in what was in June at 30, uh, 33,271. So this is going to be really... 33,271. Wait, wait, wait. 
That was the low, uh, the week of the 18th of June. So that says a close below 33,000 at any point. Uh, that would be really negative. And we're at 34,455. So that's quite a way off. Uh, on the upside, a closing weekly price above 34,650 would be very good and say, yep, there's that rectangle or arch formation. All right, let's go to the S&P. S&P at this particular point, uh, weak, down 26 at 43.30. There's that lowercase h. It failed. It took out the left side low of 4305 back on the, what was it, the 18th of September. Big rally to the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Gets repels at a peak A. Goes to peak A minus. Whoops, I forgot to make that an I A minus because it took out the left side starting point and always becomes a minus. You have to start over. And it went below. It went to 4288.52 on Friday. Tried to rally. Couldn't even make it to the nine period moving average. And kaboom. We're down again today. This is really very weak action. And that weekly chart has gone from a sell signal. I, I, I should have said it's probably a sell mode because it closed underneath the nine period moving average. But that nine period moving average is still um, way above the 14 period moving average. So I'm just giving it a little leeway. All I can say is sliding it doesn't have to close, but a slide below 42.75 says, uh-oh. Weekly sell mode, we've got time and price on our hands into October. And the monthly chart is only in a leg B. We always expected these four higher peaks in a buy mode. This is a buy mode in the monthly. At some point, we should get to leg C and then a leg D. Oh, nice move. Suddenly, sudden, suddenly some, somebody did some buying. Look at this uh, on the one-minute chart. Boom. All of a sudden, you got a little spike to, to the upside. So you've seen a lot of those. A lot of those have failed. I think there's a little bit of a leverage here towards the upside. Oh, I need to uh, do something else. Let me just show you before I forget. The QQQ, the 354.38 low of yesterday after the 382.78. I mean, that's a 30-point down move. And so that's it's almost like a 9% move in the Qs, that NDX 100, and they were the leaders. And that's the big thing that I'm talking about all the time. I, yes, they say um, higher yields do affect and impact negatively the tech stocks, but you know, the NDX 100 is made up of other things as well. It isn't just tech stocks. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking they, they, they do for a really good timeout. This is a timeout. And they don't have to go all that much deeper than from here. Uh, there's a lot of support in the 350s. But a break below 350 says, uh-oh, now we're into something a lot more serious. So just in the meantime, think of it as a big consolidation in the index 100. IWM, the Russell 2000, those small caps are trying to find some support. They also have those smaller banks. They have the smaller um, this oil service sector. But even here, it's a struggle. It's just a sideways struggle. In fact, it kind of looks like the gold chart. Look, sideways move. Look at the gold. Sideways move. This is making lower lows and lower highs. Uh, just down one right now at 1757. Um, I just think that gold is, is in play for intraday trading, but nothing yet bigger than that. I wouldn't be surprised if there is something into gold uh, just a little later on if we start to see the gas silver as well. Uh, silver is uh, up just a little bit, stuck in the lower range. But if we start to see the Bitcoin, um, well, Bitcoin is having a big move here. Uh, we're still long the, the Bitcoin, a small position. We are short the, the, um, the, the QQQs and long the Dow, shorter. So we'll be back, back in a moment because we want to look at high paid profit. We want to look at crude oil. We want to look at bonds. We'll be back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. This is Monday, the 4th of October. The Dow is now down 35. S&P's down 25. And we're looking at Bitcoin. Bitcoin is up 90. Had a really, yeah, this, these moves in Bitcoin are not for the, uh, uh, the, 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 the fickle-hearted. Because uh, look at this. It goes from 53,125, a peak D in the chapter. Wait, remember D, the fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. Wow, did other things happen? It had a range of 53,125 and a low of 43,840. Then it gets stuck in the range and it does the dreaded H pattern, goes under it, over it, under it. And then out of the blue, the second H pattern, the successful one off the 200 period moving average, whoop, the rocket ship back up again, has a spectacular move between Thursday and Friday, again from the 41,000s to the 48,000s. Here it is at 48,510. But if you look at the weekly chart, that really tells you what's going on. It's kind of stuck in the range, but very much in play for some people with much bigger moves. Than gold. Now it is trading at 48,510. And if you're looking at gold, it's trading at 1755. I would say that there's a little difference in price, but if you're looking at patterns percentage wise, you've got big moves here. But the unfortunate thing about gold is it's making this arch formation. It is holding way above the low that was made back around about the 9th or so of August in the below 1680 with a big move to a peak D in the daily chart at about 1838-ish. And then it comes down with these H patterns. It hasn't had that big spike. But if you look at the XLF, <coughs> excuse me, in play towards the upside, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund, why? Because of this, look, the TLT yields are going up as the TLT bonds are price is going down from 151s down to the 143s is trading at 144.36 right now. And because the because the year, the rates are going up, it's helping the banks. Now it's not the, the end all and be all, but it is an important component in terms of the bank. Now, if we start to see the XLF, once we start to see a slowing economy, and we really should see that because, let's face it, uh, inflation kind of slows things down. Uh, the the shipping uh, situation is really bad. Containers, if you, if you just can't get the goods, 
then all of a sudden, what happens to Christmas? What happens to, uh, you know, all these different aspects that you're looking at for the holiday season? Well, if the XLF, because yields suddenly have a bounce, and the XLF suddenly, or for whatever reason, if the XLF starts to trade under 37, or in the whole of October actually trades under 36, I suspect that's going to be because of fear, and that'll create some fear in the banking area. And that's where I think we might see gold move higher, because gold, at this particular point, it, it needs... Did I just do that? I did. Oh, that was a mistake. Just went to the wrong thing. There it is. We're back. Okay, good. Oops, we're not back. Yes. Got it back. Yep, there it is. So what we're looking at here is if the XLF actually trades into the 39, 30 to 39.55 area, that's probably going to be because yields are starting to pull back even further. So we, we've got this, we've got everything, all our longs that we've held, and we're making new highs just recently, we expected them to pull back, taking real nice gains, kept core positions. And all I can say is that you've got to keep your eye on a couple of things. Let's just go to um, crude oil right now and see, look, crude oil is breaking out. Is this a brand new, is this old F or brand new B? Well, the MAGD hasn't shown a single sign of turning down. The stochastics flat at 83%, over 80%. I like that's very good. The unbalanced volume is suggesting that it's a little toppy, but a little toppy just means it could pull back some. So I normally do this. I go, I, I'm a little conservative in this case. I'll say with the F. And if it pulls back and then makes another high, I'll say it's probably not a G. It's probably going to be a G slash C. In the meantime, there's nothing to do. If one is long, anything to do with the crude oil, so far this is acting so beautifully. Now, if you look at the monthly chart, that breakout in the Chapman Wave falling axe formation, uh, what is that? That's lower highs and much lower lows, and then it breaks out to the upside. This is suggesting that there could be a one, at least a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside going from the well, this is already fair because it's $7.51 for crude oil. That's because we had that terrible April of last year action where we went, actually the futures went minus. But let's just say there's, let's halve it. There's a move from 38 to the breakout level of 60. So you've got yourself 15 points. 15 points from the breakout here of 65 takes you to the, uh, to the uh, 77 area. That's where we are. And this is a leg D. So anything above this starts to say that the left side high, which is the high in the continuous contract of October of 2018, and that was at 86.20. Remember, this gets smoothed out, so the price gets changed. The date, the pattern, everything else is perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. The moving averages, but the price gets uh, changed. So that high, we, we'll go to the high, the current high, which is at, um, we're at 78.38, the high of the day. But we're looking at the high of October, and that was at 86.20. So I would say that left side high would actually be a, at least an upside target over the coming weeks. And we're going to be watching that very closely. Uh, what's the support? There's huge support between the 72 and 69 area. Uh, if there's whatever reason it is, it suddenly turns down. So this is a very important moment. Now that Dow's down 165, S&P's down 37. Are we stopped out of a long position? Uh, not yet. No, we have, we got in right of the low on my, on Friday, so we have a little cushion. But as I say, we are still short the QQQs, and the QQQ right now has it taken out the left side low of Friday. Yes, we're below that. We're below the Friday's low. We're now 353.92. This is not good when you don't have leadership. And I needed to go to high-grade copper. High-grade copper, we're doing all these things because it's Monday, beginning of the week. We want to know what's going on. High -grade, so this is so fascinating. High-grade copper is doing well within a trading range. It's actually up to date 0.07 and 4.263. Um, all I can say is that if copper is holding well, this is an international uh, economic um, icon. We've always used it. And it shouldn't change. And if I go to, oh, let me just do this now. I'm going to go to this. I show, I forgot subscribers of opening call. Forgot on Friday. I sent it out this morning. I'll do it right now. This is my weekly. Where do we go now? This is my weekly chart of the three yields. That's the 10-year, the, the, the 30-year, 10-year, and 5-year, um, as well as wood, the iShares, the timber forestry ETF, as well as the Philadelphia Housing Index. And look at this. 
Um, nice U-turn in the 30-year, the 10-year, the, the TNX this is a brown one, and the 5-year FVX. This is actually leg, leg C already in the um, in the 5-year. It's only a leg B in the weekly. But if we go above last week's high in the yield, 21.03, that's 2.103, one penny above extends leg B. One penny above the 10-year, which the high last week was 15.67. You go to 15.68, 1.568, and that extends leg B as well. Let me just double check. Uh, 11, so 13.85, yes. I'll be back in a moment with Bowser Chapman. Dow's down 210, SP's down 42. A uh, little problem here, I would say. I'll be back in a moment. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So let's just see this. Look, back in November of 2018, the 30 yield was 34.55. That's C.455. Uh, it comes all the way back down. I always forget that I didn't type this in. And it comes down to March of 2020, the turnaround day, big turnaround where we actually went along the Dow. Um, and that was a low of 11.97, 1.197. That is a whopper of a pullback, but it had a really big gain. And it goes to this uh, two buy modes that go to a peak D, and then it pulls back sharply. So the yields are telling us that we've been here before, it's no big deal. 
it'll become a big deal if the trend continues higher. On a shorter term basis, I think we're really stuck in a trading band in the yields, and that's all you need to think of. That is a trading band that is right now at the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, and if it does close any day, this is a weekly chart, so any day above 2.155, <clears throat> that's quite a breakout. And then it could go all the way back in a cup formation back to the previous high at about 2.5. But wait a minute. The weekly chart of wood, the iShares of the Global Timber and Forestry ETF, had an all-time high of 98.98 .98, uh, back in something like May. And then it pulls back sharply. That's a straight line down. And then it makes a little cup formation, the dreaded H successful, because it went under it, but it closed above. That says you can r rally towards the previous high of the arch. If you go above it, that's impressive, but you've got to stay above. And in this case, it went one week above, one week below, and then it came all the way back. It hasn't made a lower low, but today's trading up 14 cents at 85.11. So keep an eye on this because if it starts to trade any day of the week below, can I read that? Uh, below 84, um, and it's at 85.11, that's going to be a big negative and it should go lower than that. And if it trades up into the 90 area, it's at 85.11 right now, that'll be very impressive. Now look at the Philadelphia Housing Index. Look at the dreaded H. It took it out on the left side. It's got another two bars to go before we make a decision about it. But so far, if that 444.15 low of the week of the 23rd of July after making an all-time high of 538.36 back in May, I think, yep, May the week of the 14th, this is a negative, not a big negative, but it is a negative for the housing sector. All right, let's get out of this. Let me just say save. Uh, close workspace. Don't forget to save yes to all because we want to keep saving as much as we can. Now, a question I had uh, well, well, first, there's a, a number of questions. Let me just go backwards here. The last question I had, which I'll deal as the first question was Fang, Diamondback Energy Inc. Um, it is just about to make its leg D in the monthly chart above 102.53. The high today is round number 102. I suspect it'll do that. Then it might get a little toppy, but so far there's nothing. You have to say that there's a change of trend. The MACD, stochastic, and the daily, all fantastic. The weekly did cross positive. It's very good. It's not great, but it's good. The price is at a recovery high, but uh, I'd like to see the stochastic not at 64%, holding steady at 80% or higher. So, so far, there's a really good price action. No question about leg D in the daily. Uh, let me do the FXI because this covers the, the questions that I had. New low, uh, this is now a multi-month low. Um, the last, uh, we're at 3759. The major low was back in 2020, March, where it went to 33.11. And then it screamed to 54, uh, let's say 54.53, February of 2021. And now it's done the arch formation. Remember patterns just repeat over and over and over. Arch uh, formation with a lower uh, lower low than last month, and we've just begun August. Now, I might have to re-notate re this. This could very well could be E slash A, F slash B, and now we're looking at G slash C in the weekly chart. And look at this uh, dreaded H pattern, unsuccessful in the daily chart at a new low at 37.59. This is just real quickly because I always get asked about it. Baba, this is... Um, um, Alibaba trading at a low at a new monthly. Actually, it's at a new multi-year low. The low from January of 2019 of 129.83 screens up into the 300s. Peak D. Remember how many peak Ds have we seen? How important this D is, and it comes plunging down. Trough A, trough B, leg C to the downside at 138. Not good at all. And Baidu, just do this quickly. Baidu. Also, turning down, but it's holding way better than the others, but it's starting to fill the gap. And that low that was made back on the 19th, 19th of August at 135.49, went to a peak D in the daily, just at 100, just under 170, and now it's down at 145. This is not good action, not good action at all. So let's go to, um, so did that, did that. oh, I wanted to show you the dollar. The dollar was pulling back. It's pulling back again. 93.74, down 0.31. Had a really good move to a peak E. 
in a daily, a leg E because we have to wait all week before we see if it's taking out the 94.50 high. And so far it's 93.73. Um, it's this is a pretty it has pretty severe pullbacks, but it keeps making higher highs and higher lows. Let's put that together with Euro EUR USD. We're looking at that rallying co co commensurate rally. So this will have in the Chapman Way falling axe formation lower highs and much lower lows. That is suggesting to me that at 1.16 1 1.1630 uh, up 0 0.0037. Uh, this is acting a nice balance. Is really a balance because I think the dollar basically is still very strong. So it needs to break above the 1.165 area to test the 1.168 nine period moving average. But that's not the issue. The issue is this downtrend line, the Chapman wave falling X formation with the Chapman wave inside track repellent zone. You want to see within a week from today, a week from today is uh, the following week. If there is a push above 1.71, you'll see a commensurate slide in the dollar. That's going to be important. USD JPY, which usually goes in the same direction as the dollar, not the same price action or percentage, is down a tad at one, at down a 13 at 110.94. This is a single leg A, but I, I, I treat it as if it's an E slash B. Um, <laughs> it went to a higher high than that high that was made way back in May, uh, July, July of this year. The week of the second, where it went to 111.65, it went much higher than that. On Thursday, it went to 1.1, sorry, 112.07, and now it's pulling back. But the trend is the weekly chart is good because it broke above and now it's back into the rectangle. But look at the monthly chart. The monthly chart has got a peak C, a leg C. And the technicals are really good. And it says, suggests to me that the yen is holding pretty well and should move higher. Now, I need to do this. Did that, did that, did that, did that, did that. Oh, uh, dollar, D-E, D-O-W. This is the Dow Jones uh, German. It's like the DAX index. The, the, the chart looks exactly the same. Price is different because this is the Dow Jones Germany stock index. So it has a different price level. It's trading at 444, and it's gone underneath the 200 period exponential moving average. Never a good sign. And here's the other thing the GB, D O W, this is Great Britain, made a peak D in the monthly chart, and it's in the sideways range. It's holding okay, but it breaks, uh, it breaks about points lower. That's going to be a big negative. Watch it closely. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's done. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Bio 
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, oh, folks, we're back. Don't forget today, Larry comes on at 11. So uh, this is a, there's a change in uh, just the scheduling. The same players, different different time slots. Uh, and so gold is now up 10. I, I might be a little delayed. This is the action you want to see. When the market suddenly starts to pull back and you begin to see a particular area that becomes favored, you want durability. You want sustainability. So... The fact that it was weak and it went down to 1747 on the continuous contract and now it's 20 points higher than that uh, says watch gold. Uh, and you know, it's funny, not the gold stocks are lagging very badly. They are, they are prepared to move up if they don't move down. Um, but I, I'm really looking at gold. And if you're looking at the GDX, you can see that, yes, there's a nice move. It's up 31 cents to 29.64. Is this the start of a bigger move? I'm quite prepared. I would like very much to go into, I, oh, you know, we're, we're choosing sectors that we think are weak or strong. Uh, and that's that's the way we're playing it right now. And we've got a lot of cash for subscribers to opening call. We've been building up cash position for quite some time. More importantly, we want to have some trades as well as some position plays for this particular shaky period. There's no question about it. You remember I talked about the dark news cloud cover. Let me just put this here for a second uh, right here. Look, dark news cloud cover. We've been in that. We've had our second arch formation. This is the first time we've had anything quite as deep as this on the second iteration. And it's lower down. This is not a good sign at all. That's number one. The other is, I, oh, I don't want to do it now. We've had reversal signals all over the show. So Dow is the strongest of the, of the different sectors. Uh, but that, that'll weaken because it's got some, some areas that could turn soft. So I'm being very careful here. So the GDX is a potential play. I think your risk now is more that you get in and it stalls. It doesn't do anything. But I'm thinking that, yeah, I'd like to see it in play. I'd like to see the GDX trading at 30.63 or higher um, within by Tuesday or Wednesday, even sooner, but Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, what are we? We're trading at 29.66 right now. That to me would say, ah, now there's a chance you can start to fill some of the gaps. And at least you can have a decent kind of counter trend rally as this uh, channel or channel may fall in formation to the downside right there and expands on the downside that's it so what that that means that if you break above it if you close above 30.29 it's called a 30.30 in the next two sessions and of course this could all happen very quickly if it does that instead of closing under 29 it actually moves up then you can get a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside and you can get a move to the 3120s quite quickly. So I'm saying this is maybe risk reward. I think this is kind of the way I'd look at it right now. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, I had a question. Could I look at it? Wait, the question is NVIDIA. Hi, Basil, NVIDIA. Do we wait for dust to settle or nibble here for long-term hold? I wouldn't touch this at this particular point. If you think that this chip phenomenon is just, oh, you know, it was very selective in the sense that it really impacted the kind of chips that are, you know, Dave White can explain it beautifully. I'll just do my best. The chips that the, the uh, automobile companies require 
of the simplest, the older kind. So it's, it's saying to the to fabs, will you build new, old-fashioned fabs for the auto industry who don't need the very sophisticated chips? Or should they move into the 21st century, get sophisticated chips, and wait for the new products to come online, and then change all your mechanisms, electronic mechanisms, to be able to be conducive to, to the, the new upgraded chips, not the old ones. That's the issue. So the whole thing with the automobile industry is actually a lot more serious than has been that I've seen discussed. Um, but you can look and you can see, look, General Motors is up because it's been, uh, uh, been uh, right here, let me do that again. That's been foisted upon a lot of people. But I would say to you that um, this is a big spike to a leg E at 154.63, up $1.50. Looking out, I think, yes, General Motors is doing the right things in many cases. But I think that this gap is going to be filled in because there's a problem. You, you try to get a car and you have to pay full price. And then they say to you, they give you a great trade-in. <clears throat> but they, they're slapping on. They say these are the only cars around. And they're going to load uh, the cars with, with as much as they can. So this is a big issue going forward. Look at AN, which is the um, AN as the Ordination Inc. Went to a peak D. It's pulling back now. Does this hold or does, does this start to slide? It's going to tell us a lot, the Ordination. Um, all right, I don't want to get involved in this right now. I do want to go to uh, another course. So NVIDIA, SMH is in the semiconductor area. SMHs are making a new low. Or, uh, that is off to Friday's low. 249.35 was a low around about the 1920th of last month. Spirals up to a peak E at 276.69. All-time high. Plunges dreaded H pattern failure and it plunges down. This is serious stuff for the semiconductors. The next thing I want to look at, question came in. Could I look at uh, F? Oh, wait, wait. CLF. CLF is um, Cleveland Cliffs. <clears throat> Cleveland Cliffs Inc., flat roll steel, iron ore pellets take over. They took over AK Steel, which we once had. Um, and now what we're looking at is it's really struggling off the 200-period moving average. So this is just saying to me, you have to put this into the category of U.S. Steel. Down, It looks the same thing at the bottom. SLX, which is the steel ETF, looks the same. Just have patience. It's almost like NVIDIA, just the wrong moment in the wrong industry just at this particular point it'll be back in favor but at this particular point have patience i think you're going to get some fantastic buys in these things just be patient so i don't know why um you're looking at different areas for instance mars which is the mosaic company phosphate and potash new recovery actually this is, no, i'm not sure if it's an all-time high but a new recovery high uh, trading at 38.18 up 38 cents this is nice so why, why are we seeing phosphate and potash uh, in play? Why are we seeing high-grade copper holding well? Because I think intrinsically there are other things going on in the economy that are kind of working. And if you're looking at the Home Depots, HD, Home Depot, peak F in the daily chart, peak D in the weekly chart, if there's no new recovery high, um, this is saying it's very selective right now. It is extremely selective. And if I go on to, um, what was the question I had right there? Did that, did that, did that? Uh, oh, uh, the question came in, uh, uh, could I look at Myrna, which you looked at on Friday and had a huge decline from that peak D weekly chop in the dreaded H pattern. Yeah, I'm just going to say to you, <clears throat> this is very selective. You've got to be very selective. I don't see any reason why holding cash, cheated as a position, holding cash is a position, a legitimate position that says, I don't see anything I want to buy right now. I prefer to be in a cash position because after the drubbing that so many of these really fantastic companies has, they have taken, there will be fabulous buys. I'd rather be buying strength than catch a falling knife as goofy golfer in the den used to say. You want to buy? A falling, catch a falling knife, I'll sell you the metal gloves. We'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 343 or
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, Bo. So a couple of things come in just here. We've got, uh, so the question, how come the DB Agricultural Fund is moving so nicely? But thank you for it. Uh, yeah, so we are long subscribing. We've been long from 13.77. Uh, we've just taken a tad off at 1493. It's showing right now at 19.45. This is the DB Agricultural Fund. <clears throat> so it's testing the upside highs, 19.50. Uh, they made it by two cents a new recovery high. So look at this wheat. That's wheat. It's trading in leg B to the upside. Very nice move. But wait a minute. <clears throat> Soybeans down at the lows. Not good at all. They're looking at uh, carp, uh, corn. Con, as we say here, just about to make a leg D in the day, but not great. But it's also sugar, SB, which is going sideways. So it's really wheat, does wheat, that is doing the whole thing here. Can't complain. The DBA, I think we pull back a little bit. In fact, it's holding really nicely. That's good. Another question came in. Oh, the VIX index. Yeah, the VIX index. This is a big clue. If the VIX index trading right now at 24.58 all day holds strongly, and you see the Dow and the S&P are trading in the last hour towards their lows. Watch that VIX, because if it suddenly spirals into the 24.80s rather than suddenly pulls back and sees a bounce in the market, but it goes to the 24.68 to 24.78 area. Uh, what was the high on Friday? The high Isn't that funny that the high on Friday was so high? 24.89. Well, if it goes to 24.93, uh, at any point today, that's just going to suggest that this this market it can't take a breather to the upside. 
And that's the reason why we, we're raising the, raising the cash. We just you got to have some cash around for those like the Nvidia, like the buys that you want to get. And that semiconductor index making new lows again from Friday's low. I don't like it. so. Stay tuned to the bank for some extra coming up. Be very careful out there. I think it'll be plenty of buys coming along. It's built up a nice cash position. See you for Larry, and then you've got Think of and then you've got Steve, the game, the crowd. Check out Mobile Performer Day to use that. See you tomorrow. Have a great day.